Greetings, welcome back to the channel. I am Commander Tyrael and this is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sails British Campaign. In the last episode, we fought the Spanish at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent and we were awarded the HMS Victory, our first first-rate ship of the line. It's a very big upgrade. She has 112 guns and she goes really well when teamed with our other second-rate HMS Audacity as well as the seven third-rates that we have. The 1st of August 1798, we have caught up with the escorts of the French fleet at Abukir Bay, near the mouth of the River Nile. The French have anchored at the narrow entrance to the bay and will have support from land-based batteries. This fleet is all that stands between us and the vulnerable convoy that is transporting the French army. If we can destroy it, then the French ambitions in the Mediterranean will be finished. We're allowed to take 10 ships and we have 9 warships available. Seven third rates, a first rate, and a second rate. We're going to attack the French at anchor. Sounds like a worthy proposition. We have caught up with the French fleet. Unfortunately, the convoy with Napoleon is not present. If we can deprive the convoy of its escorts, more opportunities may arise to take them down. Our fleet is in line and we have the wind on our side, but the French have positioned themselves near a land-based battery. If we decide to attack from the landward side, the French coastal batteries could become an issue. The French believe that they are safe in their defensive positions. Let's prove them wrong. So we have the benefit of wind and we have the benefit of already being in motion and ready for battle. These guys are sitting casually there up in the bay. So let's head a line in with our brand new warship HMS Victory. A very large ship, she's stocked to the gills with men. She came with some upgrades too, free of charge, which was really nice, courtesy of His Majesty. And so let's have a look at what we have here. We have a frigate, a frigate, a third rate. Second rate, okay. Another second rate. Another second rate. And another. And a first rate, a, the Lorient, a fourth rate Razzy class frigate, very dangerous, big guns, extra gun deck. And it looks like another couple of second or first rate ships. This is a really big French fleet. Could be concerning, but what we're going to do is we're going to run up, run up on them and board them and then funnel out some troops. Like each ship that we take will funnel out between our lines and off the battlefield. We'll capture as many as we can. We have to destroy eight to complete the mission. Number one priority will be to take down the Lorient, the first rate. If we could get another first rate ship, our fleet will be starting to really maximize its power. We'll have a look at the land-based batteries in a moment once we get into range. Are they really anything to worry about? We've got three six-pounder coastal batteries, two of which aren't facing us, and one of them's facing the French. I think we're going to have a good time here just shooting these guys. I don't really think they're going to be a concern at all. I was expecting a fort or something similar. This is hardly a defensive position, especially against our 24-pounder guns on, that we have on a lot of our ships now. I believe one of our flagships has a 32 pounder gun deck. I've been spending so much money on upgrading and crewing these large warships that I haven't had a lot of money to buy weaponry for the ships themselves. Just upgrades and things like that. We have quite a considerable wages every turn or every time cycle. So we're really running the red line on the budget now, having all these ships of the line fully stuck with men. The last mission we received, I think it was 80,000 gold. And after crewing HMS Victory and the rest of the ships, plus one of the extra ships of the line that we received, um, we had no money left. We've been selling all the French rifles that we take, but they don't give a lot of money. So 
So yeah, that coastal defenses aren't anything to really worry about. If we had a small, a small fleet, then yeah, they could be dangerous. I think those six pounder guns would have trouble even shooting that far with any meaningful effect. Audacity is going to have her turn now. We're bringing these two lines up here. We'll, want, we'll try to run one up the port side and one up the starboard side and have two sides going. If it looks like it's going to be possible. Now the third rates are coming through. They'll start opening fire on these land batteries. These poor guys are stuck on an island and they have no way of getting off. We'll slow down a little bit so we can put one last broadside in on that land battery from HMS Victory. And then we're going to slip across the nose of this frigate here and then we'll board her with Victory. Well, there's another ship there outside that's going to provide some support to the two second rates in the line as we come down to board. And there is a slight overlap on the line. There's actually two lines there. And that second line also has a supporting frigate. We'll hold fire, because we don't have the best angle. These guys are not even ready for battle. They've got some guts of gunfire coming off them now. They also have a really bad time with the wind. If they did try to engage us, they'd have to really take a sharp angle or turn away and we'd have to pursue them. But it doesn't look like they're doing anything at all as we come up on this first, the Jerrier. HMS Victory, ready for her first boarding. We fitted her with double shot, which lowers the range of the the round shot, but it, as the name implies, doubles the amount of cannon shot leaving the ship. Excellent for those initial broadsides against larger warships. The boarding has commenced. Our first prize of the day. Once she's taken over, we'll put a skeleton crew on her and run her out between our two lines. The wind is favourable to remove these prize ships from the battlefield. The French don't seem to be taking any action. Are they surprised that we're here? Skeleton crew in. And our first captured frigate will make its way out of the battle. Running up between these two lines. I've put everyone at station because the French aren't doing anything. So we'll continue to pick their ships off until they decide to actually react. This poor island has just been decimated by all of our naval bombardment. And HMS Victory will move on to the next frigate that just sits there waiting to be boarded. As the prize ship makes way. Well, they are starting to move up. She's moving up now. And we'll, as I said, we'll run her down the center of our line so that if they do pursue her, we'll have some support. I've noticed that AI does like to chase down your prize ships if you run them, run them off. This second rate just behind the Conquerant is starting to make a little bit of motion. So we'll bring around HMS Audacity to continue this action and we'll just move our way up the line with our prize, the Lorient. She is the main objective. And then we're also going to make sure we finish off the right amount of ships and then possibly going to disengage. I don't feel like we have the firepower and the manpower to fight all the second rates in that second formation. But we'll see. If they keep acting like this, we'll just take them one by one. Victory's taking her second prize of the day. 
or Destiny is a little bit slow to action. We'll send them off in an actual crew with a proper crew. Because it looks like this ship here is now turning. So they may be wanting to chase down the Franklin as we make way. We'll try and get HMS Victory up onto a boarding action. She has slightly more crew than the Conquerant. So she could board her easily. And we'll get the second line in motion. Because I've disengaged them, they have to be reattached to the formation. Now my last battle was a little bit chaotic. I wasn't expecting to control so many ships. I think we had 15 ships or, and it ended up being 20 in the end. So we're trying to keep a little bit more cohesion this time. There is a surprising amount of micro if you want to be successful in this game. Or you can just let them fight it out and see who wins. I prefer a heavy micro strategy game. So this ship on the starboard side has started taking fire at HMS Victory. We're replying with double shot. And then we're going to turn in front of this second ship of the line, the second rate. Ideally, if we could capture the second rate and that first rate and then bug out, that would be that would be the best option. That second formation all had full ships. So we may run out of men to crew everything if we try to take them. And we'll be at a disadvantage if we try to fight them. Can HMS Victory take her third prize of the day? She's fighting double shot on both sides. Half of that ammunition is gone. She's putting out a reasonable amount of damage. Especially against the Aqualon. HMS Aragon is on the move with her posse of third-rate ships. Aragante, the former Aragante. For, former protagonist of our campaign, but she has stood aside as the larger ships have taken over our fleet. She could still be considered the flagship of the third-rate squadron though. with an impressive amount of captures and kills throughout this campaign. This is a fourth-rate Razzie out here. Extra gun deck. Aqualon is being boarded by HMS Victory. Very, very experienced crew. They're basically the crew of the Aragante or the HMS Arrogant. And also our current flagship with with our Admiral, John Jarvis, on board. Try and put some shots in the rear. Well, that's a very nice raking shot, 100 damage. But we are hitting HMS Victory 2, so we should hold fire, I think. This second raid has escaped our net and he's heading back to his allies. Curious to see what he hopes to do. He is putting out fire on HMS Audacity. We've now captured the Aqualon. Not sure what those guys are doing. They're heading in the wrong direction. Oh no, they're our prize ships. Well on our way out of the formation. This guy is just getting absolutely caned. Refusing to set sail. We're going to get Jarvis out because I, I think Victory's done. She She's used up a lot of crew to board those three ships and man them. And thus, so she's not going to participate in the main fighting anymore. We'll get Jarvis into a better ship. Second rate ship, Aqualon. And so Aqualon's not going to flee. Aqualon's going to stay and fight. We have a lot of a lot of ships coming inbound now. Micro is getting a little bit more difficult. We're going to try and take the Genero. Audacity has so many men on board. 
And she has our best boarding officer. Oh, one of our new third rates has just collided with the Aqualon. And yeah, we're just going to leave that for now. But the boarding actions are more important. Conquerant is coming hard into her own allied line. Hoping to stir them to action perhaps. Does Audacity have the gumption to take out Genero while the Lorient first rate is sitting on her starboard side? Can we do that? We've given our ships a bit of a reputation for being daring and brave and absorbing all fleets before us into the British Empire. I think we'd be a little bit stupid to try and take everything in this engagement though. Prudence is the best option. So we're attempting our boarding action. We are moving in a little bit slow and the angle is not correct. Have to try and turn rudder to try and straighten up. Just as the Lorient has started to move, we may get pincered between the two ships. Boarding action is not working. We may have to change targets because that's a death sentence to be pinned that close between two ships. She is audacious, but she's not invulnerable. Getting our prize formation, just making sure they're okay. No one's chasing them down. HMS victory and that will head out towards them. Audacity has disengaged from the Genero, but she's done a lot of crew damage. She's done 40, killed 40 crew. We are still engaged. Trying to push up on the Lorient. HMS Alceste can come around and engage Genero. Another repurposed French ship who kept her name as it is an elegant name. Now because of the wind has changed slightly, the fleeing ships are trying to tack across the wind and that's, I've had to straighten their line up a little bit. We are now engaged with the Lorient. We have the manpower advantage. Which is fortunate because she is a massive ship. She looks like a four deck ship. Our prize flagships are moving out. Prisma is causing, causing a bit of a traffic jam. We have lost Captain Love Bagster. Killed in action on HMS Audacity. One of our best boarding officers. HMS Alceste has now started boarding the Genero. Trying to detangle some of these third rates. Again, not too impressed with my micro. I could do much better. But I don't like slowing the game down. Some of these missions already take long enough. Alright, we'll send across the crew, Love Bagster's crew. And a couple of extra officer compliments to assist with that. But the Lorient, the first rate, is now under our control. Prisma has disengaged from that traffic get jam. And we'll get her over to attack the Conquerant. We still have four ships remaining to complete the objective. And now the large line is really starting to move. These guys are not impressed with our actions. We have now captured the Lorient. We just need, we're going to get her into the fight. She's going to be pretty important to secure ourselves a retreat. Genero is now ours. We've had an explosion. HMS alert. Looks like she's collided with that French Razzie that was sitting in the bay. Gigantic plume of fire as they collide. Lorient has our brand new guns underway. Making sure to be on round shot. HMO, uh, HMS Audacity is in a little trouble here. She's got two, two second rates bearing down on her. We're not staying for a fight. She doesn't have the crew for it. Turning a bit to try and deflect some of those shots. 
throw off the aim of the gunners. Prism is going to come in and intercept the Conquerant. They're running hard up on the shoals there, so they may get trapped. Genero is still tangled up with the Alceste. Our third race is just chilling, watching everyone do all the hard work. Yeah, I'm confident that the Parisma will be able to take Conquerant. They won't be able to go anywhere after that. But if we tangle them up and leave them on the shoals, once the objective's complete, we can leave the battle. Meanwhile, this French second raid, they just they haven't got a lot of options. The wind is really against them. But if we would have a major wind change now, that may change the flow of this battle. As long as we stay upwind of them, we get the advantage. Prisma is now boarding. Audacity's making a run. She's taking a fair bit of damage. Get her attached to the other ships that were involved with the first boarding actions. HMS Victory. Alcest is going to give a little bit of cover as she tries to run away. Finally got HMS Alert untangled. Lorient is coming up hard on her port though. I'm fighting the wind trying to turn these big ships around. Well, they've got to make a collision there. Hurry up. Turn the screws on. <laughs> Prisma is still being boarded. It's a long boarding action, that one. Audacity's wavering a little bit. Conquerant is now under our control. Put a crew on board. Enough to make her guns useful. I don't see myself being able to navigate out of that though. So we need to anchor up Conquerant. Lorient's getting some help in the turn there by HMS Alert. And Audacity has sort of got out of the danger now. She's being engaged by a smaller ship, but she should be able to handle that. Especially with Alcest there as cover, who is also taking a fair bit of damage from that French ship. The Sovereign's trying to get around the Tonnant forcefully against the wind. HMS Alert's going to come up hard, put some fire onto her, through the bow. Not too many hits, but a little bit of damage. Some sail damage as well. But now the wind has changed and it's blowing to the east. So still the same sort of direction. Now this is going to be hairy for HMS Alert. She's going to get tied up between three French ships. But her only way out is to run through the center. Meanwhile, everyone else is having their traffic jam. Get some crew from the Parisma into the Lorient to help increase her gun reload speed and ability. Prisma is pretty much done for the fight now up against that shoal. Fortunately, we don't have to actually run away or they would be done for. <laughs> Crews are almost aboard the Arrogant. Oh, sorry, the Lorient. Arrogant's wondering how to get out of this situation. As two more French ships are starting to really bear across the wind now. It's a little bit easier for them to get moving. Oh no, our ships are on fire. How they must have got hit by a stray round. Get some boats in the water to help with their repairs. Fire's gone out, but I just... Yeah, I don't know. Those guys are stacked for boarding and they're not going to see any action. The hero and the sovereign are starting to engage our third rates now. Unfortunately, our larger warships had to disengage. I didn't want to risk them. And they're engaged with the smaller ships of the French squadron. 
Lorient, bringing the fight to her former friends. Conqueron's fire is still, still going. Not good. These guys look like, like they're going to try and break through the center of that third rate line. And the final French ships are now underway. So we're going to make a dash and Lori Lorient's going to be the blocker. Agamemnon, we should try and board from this. We'll turn hard to starboard. We'll try and see if we can grab her as she goes past. As I said, all of my ships are stocked for boarding. Slower. Oh, HMS Alert's taking a lot of damage from the last of the French squadron that are now underway. Exposing her rear for a juicy stern shot. Agamemnon's fighting the wind and won't be any use. Lorient's taking a little bit of damage. We're using Grape Shot here. Arrogant will use Round Shot deep down on the hull. Astute is engaged with the Sovereign. That's not a very good angle there, Agamemnon. But now we have the benefit of the wind for a runaway, for an escape. A hasty retreat. These frigates will be the only thing that can really keep up with us. The first of our prize ships, the Guerriere, has retreated. Mercure is about to make a collision with one of our ships. But mostly we're underway, with the exception of Agamemnon, who's still sitting there wishing they could board. Aragon has collided with the Mercure. But mostly we've just done a, a drive-by drive by heist. Grand Theft Age of Sail. Franklin has retreated. That was our second prize frigate that we took at the start of the engagement. And we are pretty much untangled from this mess. The French can turn around and chase us, but they were on the defensive, so they may be unlikely to do so. Conan is giving chase. We'll turn Alcesta around to face that threat because we still have to destroy one more ship. HMS Victory will do similarly to the Timoleon. And these will be the last of our prizes, I think. We'll just, we'll just destroy them. Grand Theft Age of Sail is complete. We managed to capture two fifth-rate frigates, two second-rate, and a first-rate in the Lorion. And I'm going to rename her. I have a the perfect name for her. Unfortunately, we lost Love Bagster and another of our officers. They were deceased as a result of our boarding actions. Nonetheless, we continue. The Lorient will be rechristened HMS Vengeance. The naming convention is first rates get a V, second and third rates get an A designation. Just keeps things nice and easy to recognize, but keeps them with some character as well. And nonetheless, that concludes another episode. If you've enjoyed the series so far, make sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Commander Tyrael, out.